dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Kent Smith in the Aurora, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your Theater of Stars, where Hollywood's foremost motion picture personalities join us to produce plays we know that you'll enjoy. That widely known and very popular actor, Kent Smith, is our star. And the title of our comedy romance, The Aurora. In our story, Kent Smith turns artist in the character of one Joe Winters. Joe is a draftsman, a good one, but he likes painting. And he isn't so good at art. When romance comes his way, the losing battle his art has been waging suddenly collapses. She doesn't like his paintings either. Our curtain for Act One of the Aurora will rise in just a moment. Here now is our announcer, Wendell Niles, with an important message. Veterans, your experience in the U.S. Air Force can mean a lot to you. Right now, the Air Force can use your skill and training. You'll be enlisted in grade according to your ability and experience. And if you want to train for a new career in aviation, you'll have opportunity to qualify for one of the Air Force specialist schools. Ask for details about opportunities for veterans at your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now, once again, at the microphone, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Aurora, starring Kent Smith as Joe Winters. The dictionary defines it this way. Aurora, dawn, east, the rising light of morning. That was the name Joe Winters had given his painting of the sunrise, Aurora. Joe had conceived it of a Sunday. His one day away from his job as draftsman, with few and fleeting hours each week apart from the exacting, grasping eye of his employer, Mr. Flick. Yes, Joe had first thought of it of a Sunday. Then, on succeeding weekends, he experienced the joys of creating it, of seeing his aurora materialize on the canvas before him, to the sweat of his determination and the touch of his brush. Could one blame him, then, for being just a little bit excited? His creation towards the door of Andre Donet, art dealer of sorts. For in his tiny shop, filled with bric-a-brac and second-hand furniture, Andre occasionally sold an oil painting, and Joe could use a dollar. Good morning, Andre. Good morning, Joe. How goes it? Mm, terrible, Joe. Business is terrible. Uh, I'll change that. Here's my masterpiece, Andre. What uh, do you call this? The Aurora. Really? Oh, what's wrong with that? To the door of my shop comes every starving artist in town. In droves they come, and fully half of them have painted the Aurora. Ah, but not like this, Andre. No, most of them are not quite so atrocious. Now, Andre, don't be too harsh on me. Oh, forgive me, Joe. I did not mean it to sound so bad. If I were one to take things to heart that you repeat... No, 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 no. It is many that I once had ambitions as an artist myself. And even as a dealer, I once had one of the finest salons in Paris. It is none too pleasant memory now, you know, doing business in this shack with the unknown and for the most part untalented. But you might make a brilliant discovery, Andre. A young Picasso, a, a budding Renoir. Mm, there is one with talent. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, not you. Saka. He is magnificent. He has tremendous talent. He has hidden genius. Saka? Ah, does he have my color? Does he? Mm, I must admit your sunrise is rather exciting. Well, the truth at last. Oh, but I warn you, I am being very generous. Well, while you're still in that generous mood, what about hanging it for me here? I'll put it up for a week, Joe. If it isn't sold by then, it Ah, will... but it will be. <laughs> you foolish boy. Joe, you have a job with a future to it. Now, why involve yourself so in this dream of becoming a famous artist? You spend every cent you make. Well, look at you. Look at that awful suit. Andre, I long ago determined to become a fine artist. You determined. I'll get there. Well, God always takes care of the foolish. Perhaps you too. I resent that. 
But I'll tell you, Andre, further than any ambitious desires, there's Fleck, my cravening employer. Every day when I leave the shop, I pray it'll be the last. Oh, Fleck is impossible. I had him in my place here. But you are draftsmen. There are other employers. Oh, you must be joking. Jobs are scarce these days, and in my line of work, they've practically disappeared. A condition Fleck delights to remind us of each day. He would, naturally. Well, it isn't so bad for me. I have only myself. But for a fellow like my friend Clark, with a new baby coming on, it wouldn't be tough. Say, I'd better be getting to work. I'm late. See you later, Andre. Goodbye, Joe. And you may hang my picture in the center of your show window. I give you my permission. Really? Young man, you are fortunate that I present it on my back wall. Hello, Joe. Good morning, Clark. Say, what's wrong? You're white as a sheep. Plenty. Fleck just gave us a bad news. Bayview Homes have canceled out on us. No kidding. Joe, will you come oh. in? Um, yes, Mr. Fleck. You're seven minutes late. I'm sorry, Mr. Fleck. I'll stay on tonight and make it up. See that you do. We lost Bayview Homes this morning. Terrible blow. Just as I've prophesied all along, the bottom has dropped out. But they're still putting up buildings and homes around town, Mr. Fleck. Well, if they are, we certainly aren't doing their drawings. Our business is bad. We're going to have to cut down. Just don't give me an excuse to fire you, Joe. I'll try not to, Mr. Fleck. That's all? Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Mr. Fleck. What is it? I suppose you've heard that Clark is expecting another baby. I hadn't. Any day now. <laughs> We're all hoping it'll be a boy to go with his three girls. Yes. Well, maybe a new child will light a fire under Clark. I swear he's the slowest man in the shop. Now, there's still a little bit of the morning remaining. Yes, sir. Joe. Joe, what do you have to say? Is he going to cut down? Oh, I don't know. Here, let me give you a hand with these drawings, huh, Clark? Hmm. I was hungry. Say, Joe, uh, thanks for helping me with those drawings. Fleck is in a rush for him. Oh, he's always in a rush. I, um... I'm glad he didn't say any more to you about having to lay somebody off. Well, no more than usual at any rate. But why do you worry about your job, Clark? Why? Well, there's Marge and the kids, you know. Besides, I'm not the best draftsman at the shop. Who says you're not the best? Well, it's fairly evident. It's only as evident as you allow it to become. Now, let me show you. I like to paint. I want to be an artist, full time. Well, yes, I know. Well, let me tell you something. Over at the school where I study, they think I'm terrible. You should have seen the trouble I had getting a little art dealer on 53rd Street to put up one of my paintings. One tiny <laughs> candle. He gave you an argument? Didn't want it on the premises. He thinks I'm the world's worst. But I don't care what they think at school or what he thinks. Oh, I don't have any doubts about you, Joe. If I just had your confidence... You have, only you don't know it. Say, there's your wife. Oh, so it is. Hello, sweet. Hello, darling. They said I might find you here. Joe. Hello, Marge. I haven't seen you for a long time. <laughs> no, I don't get out much. Sit down, sweet. Where are the children? I left them with the Browns next door. The reason I came downtown, darling, they're having a sale on baby nightgowns. After three children, don't you have a supply of those? <laughs> <laughs> we should, but he has to polish his car every Sunday. <laughs> I'm guilty. Well, darling, shall I get them? We'll save over a dollar. By all means. Marge, you mean to say you came down here to ask this character sitting beside me if you could save him money? Do you think he's worth it? Oh, he's kind of lovable when you get to know him. Oh, bye, darling. I'll be running along now. Bye, sweet. Bye, Marge. He's all right, Clark. She sure is. But, uh, that's why I worry about things at the shop. I sure hate to put her in any kind of a spot. But that's what I was trying to point out to you a minute ago, Clark. All you've got to do, Clark, is to believe that you're the finest draftsman ever created. That will be the end of worries about Fleck or anything else. Gee, I sure do thank you, Joe. You made me feel a lot better. A whole lot better. <laughs> Black Draftsman Service, Joe Winter speaking. Joe, this is Andre. Yes, Andre. Miracle of miracles, Joe. I just sold your painting. You did? I can't believe it myself. But if you could come over, I could give you these sweet details. Well, it's, it's almost quitting time. I'll be right over. With amazing Joe. All day there is no business. When suddenly, what should pull up in front of my shop at the limousine? Three blocks. Long. Yes, yes. A beautiful young lady comes in. She looks around. Suddenly she stops in front of your painting. 
The Aurora, she says, with stars in her eyes. But this is magnificent. How much for this one? Well, we're, we're seeing the limousine and almost uh, touching the main coat. I, I swallow and say, uh, $200 for you and the my commission. 200 bucks. And here it is, Joe. We found her, my angel. She'd buy anything of yours, she sees. She's wild about your work. Oh, for Zaka, I could believe it. For you, uh, I still have to pinch myself. Well, listen, I'm going to get another canvas or two over to you immediately. Yes, do it, do it, do it. She's coming back tomorrow. Well, meanwhile, I've got to get back to the office and try to catch Clark. This is proof positive of something I was telling him this noon. Clark, I've got news for you. I sold my painting. Say, what's going on here? You're, you're gathering all your things up. I've got news for you, Joe. Fleck just gave me my walking papers. I'm sorry, Clark, but why? He says I'm too slow. He said I was late with those drawings today. But you weren't, Clark. I know. I helped you with them. Well, that was his excuse. Joe, I don't know what I'm going to do. You wait here. I'm going to talk to Fleck. One usually knocks before entering my office, Joe. I'm sorry, Mr. Fleck. I wasn't thinking. I suppose not. Well, I'm delighted to see you making up your seven minutes. I wasn't really doing that, Mr. Fleck. I was talking to Clark. I'm sorry about Clark. Business outlook is horrible. I don't quite agree with you, Mr. Fleck. There's building going on all over town. The Latham building, for example. Twenty stories high. A block square. Why, if we only had a fraction of that building, we'd be busy for a year. Just try to get the Latham building now. Competition being what it is. Well, maybe so. But getting back to Clark, I know he finished those drawings and had them in on time. Just how do you know? Because I helped him finish them. Aha, uh -huh, the truth comes out. Right behind my own back, collaborating one with another to misrepresent, to try to defraud me. Uh, I knew Clark was too slow to finish those drawings on time. Mr. Fleck, I think the least thing you could have done was to wait until Clark's baby was born. I'm not interested in what you think, Joe. And you're getting a little out of hand. I warned you this morning not to give an excuse to me to fire you. So you did. Well, I guess I'm going to throw caution to the winds. I'm going to give you a good excuse, Mr. Fleck, a real good excuse. Get, get out of here! What happened, Joe? I'm moving out with you. Joe, it wasn't on my account, was it? No, not really. My public demands it, Clark, that I devote my full time to painting. Really? Yeah, and don't you worry. Until you find a job, you can help me carry my canvases over to Andre Donay's art shop. We pause briefly from our story, The Aurora, starring Kent Smith, to bring you an important message from your government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know of one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. The curtain rises on Act Two of The Aurora, starring Kent Smith as Joe Winters. Rising to the help of a friend in need, Joe Winters has abruptly terminated his employment as draftsman for one Herman Flick, as abruptly as a punch in the nose can be. But Joe's spirits are high, for having sold his painting, The Aurora, Andre Donay, art dealer, has happily informed Joe that Joe's unseen patron is anxiously awaiting cash in hand, more of his canvases. On the strength of this, Joe has given his friend, Clark, a job carrying his canvases over to Donay's shop. With a new baby en route, Clark is profoundly grateful for his assistance over a rough spot. As our scene opens, we find Clark entering Joe's apartment. That you, Clark? Yes, Joe. Well, did you get the paintings over to Andre? All three of them. Andre was very happy to get them. He says the young lady should be in within an hour or so. I wonder if three will be enough. I guess so. I don't want to make her think they're cheap with me. Uh, 
Uh, Joe. Yeah? I, I was wondering if I could have the rest of the day off. I called Marge from Andre's shop and I... You mean today's the day? Looks that way, Joe. Well, you better get Marge right over to the hospital. Uh, I will, Joe. Thanks. Now, uh, everything's set at the hospital? Thanks to you, Joe. Marge and I still think it's rather reckless to be going into a double room when Marge could very easily go into a war. Listen, only the best for Marge. And now tell me, you need money. Well, Joe... Here's uh, 50 bucks. Oh, gee, Joe, I owe everything to you. Not to me, the Aurora. Have you gone through that 200 already? Well, I've got 10 bucks left. That'll last me until I get down to Andre's. Now, let's hear from you, Clark. <laughs> Well, Andre, what happy little song do you have for my ears today? I have only discord, Joe. Discord? You mean she hasn't been in? She is in. Then she didn't buy all three? She didn't even buy one. But I don't understand. Well, perhaps I can help you out on that. You're the artist, aren't you? Well, that's right. I'm Sandra Evans. How do you do, Miss Evans? It is Miss Evans. Yes. I was very much hoping it would be. Now, listen, let's get down to business here, shall we? We're not getting anywhere this way. Yeah, that's what you think. I mean the paintings. Oh, yes. Uh, about my paintings, Miss Evans. I'm afraid I don't like your three new ones at all. You don't, Miss Evans? But I think your painting, the Aurora, is magnificent, Mr. Zaka. Zaka? Did you say Zaka? Andre. That, that is your name, isn't it? Andre, what have you done? Oh, dear, what have I done? You've given her Zaka's Aurora. We were so late yesterday. I had the lights turned off for reasons of economy. And you were dying to make a sale. Business is business. You idiot. Well, it is simply a mistake. You mean you didn't paint the picture I purchased? Unfortunately, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Hello? Yes? Joe there? Yes, yes. Uh, one moment. Uh, it's for you, Joe. Hello? Joe? Yeah? It, it's a boy. Seven pounds, 13 ounces. Wonderful, Clark. How's Marge? Oh, Marge is fine. Oh, uh, Joe, uh, I, I had to bring Marge to the hospital in an ambulance. You don't mind, Joe. Only 35 bucks. Uh, you know what, Joe? Marge and I are such sentimentalists. We're going to call him Joseph Aurora Clark. How do you like that? <laughs> I'm uh, touched, Clark. Touched. No, you would be. Will you be hearing from me? So long, Joe. Goodbye. Uh, Clark had a baby. Friend of mine. Oh, how nice. Everything is happening today. You can say that again. Well, Miss Evans, uh, you will undoubtedly be interested in more Zaka, won't you? Oh, by all means. Uh, you wouldn't care to look at more of mine, Miss Evans. I have a beautiful still life titled uh, Onions. I'm sorry. I have tried to tell you, Joe, you just do not have it. I'm afraid you've got something there. Uh, Miss Evans, uh, I will get Zaka on the ball immediately for you. Well, now, let's be clear about this. It's not for me, but rather for my employer, Mrs. Constantine Constant. I'm her secretary. I purchase most of her art. Well, what a lovely person to know. I read in the paper where Mrs. Constant spent a million dollars last year for art. Uh, two million. Yes, I believe that Zach is a fine... So does Mrs. Constance. Well, I, I am delighted to inform you I have an outright exclusive with Zaka. Oh, good. Well, why don't you give Mrs. Constant a ring? Tell her what of Zaka you got together for her. Oh, I will be most happy to. Now, Joe, what about that $200? That belongs to Zaka, you know. I better get back and have a talk with Mr. Fleck. Maybe he'll put me back on. Well, can I give you a lift somewhere? Would you? Of course. Oh, that's very kind of you. Well, I feel responsible in a way. I bought the painting, remember? I wish I could forget it. Well, now to face Mr. Fleck. This the place? This is it. Thanks very much. Say, can I wait for you? Sure. But why? I want to see how this works out. All right. I'll be back. Hiya, boys. Hello. 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 What is it? I didn't knock, Mr. Fleck. I was afraid you wouldn't talk to me. Oh, I'm happy to see you back, Joe. Glad to see you back here. I suppose you've been all over town and find yourself fresh out of employers. Fresh out of sponsors would be more accurate. Well, you're fresh out here, too, Joe. That was a lot of thanks for keeping you on these years, Joe. A punch in the nose. I was uh, a little excited, Mr. Fleck, yeah. but actually you deserved it. All right. But don't come back crawling to me asking me for a job. Go get the Latham building, all that construction you were yakking about. That's your only chance, wise guy. No 
luck? No luck. Sorry. But you don't have to look as if you'd like to bite somebody's head off. That's precisely what I'd like to do, and am going to do. Are you still with me? Seem to be. Let's go back to Andre's. Please, Joe, don't hold my collar so firmly. Andre, you're responsible for all this. You put me into this hole. Now you're going to get me out. Please, please, please do not get so excited, man. Uh, what did Flex say? He said to go out and get the Latham building. Some of that construction that's going on around town. Just a minute. Ah, I see a ray of sunshine. Latham is an old friend of mine. Perhaps I can help you. Uh, give to me ten dollars. Ten bucks? What for? This is my last ten. Never mind. Give, give. This has got to be legitimate. But... Now, uh, don't you question it. When I'm cooking with uranium... No. Now, now, give me 15 minutes. Then drop by Mr. Latham's office, pick up your authorization to do the entire Latham building. You must be out of your mind. Why, with such an authorization, I'd have fleck in the palm of my hand. Just wait, Joe. You will. <laughs> I thought I'd chase you out of here earlier this afternoon. Better read this, Fleck. No. What? Why, Joe, my boy, this is an authorization to do the entire Latham building. That's right, Mr. Fleck. Well, sit down, my boy, sit down. Uh, thanks, <laughs> Mr. Fleck. Uh, what's that authorization worth to you? Is it worth 51% of this business? 51%? Well, <clears throat> now, Joe, I might go a quarter. Uh, I uh, guess I'm in the wrong office. No, 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 sit down, Joe. Don't go away. Uh, all right, I'll talk turkey. We'll run things together, Mr. Fleck. Yes, Joe. <laughs> you don't know how sweet that sounds. Now, let's give the boys the rest of the afternoon off, shall we? Why, but it's only ten minutes after four. Shall we? Uh... Yes, Joe. And uh, give Clark a ring, won't you? Forgetful person. You haven't congratulated him on, on his new baby. I wanted to stop by and thank you, Andre. No, it was nothing. What in the world are you doing, clearing everything out? I am getting Zaka on the board. Zaka? Yes, which is going to be his studio. Oh, you know, Mrs. Constant, she's wild about Zaka. Oh, what a lovely creature, Mrs. Constant. And a widow, you know. So, you're doing all this for Zaka? Mm -hmm. For myself, actually. You see, Joe, I have not told you. Zaka is the name under which I paint. <laughs> Why, you old buzzard. You didn't even recognize your own painting. Mm, the dim light and... Uh, Gross commercialism. Ah, but now, now, now I am started. You know, Grandma Moses started at 76. I am starting at uh, 56. Uh, what was that? Well, we'll make it 66. Who cares? Mrs. Constant doesn't. But I still don't understand how you swung the Latham deal. And my ten bucks. An investment, my boy. Latham, he brings paintings air. Now, he's a ham artist apart ever since he made his first million. When I told him he had sold a painting for ten bucks, he was ready to do anything. Well, what painting did I buy? It is entitled The Aurora. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, Andre. Uh, do not forget to give my regards to the young lady. Joe, you haven't even told me your name yet. Joe? Hello, Joe. How do you do? Well... My little old painting didn't win any art prize, but it accomplished a lot, indirectly. So it did. Got Clark his baby, got Clark his job back, got me a partnership, got me you. Glad you're finally getting around to me. And just when the moon is coming up, too. The curtain falls in the final act of The Aurora. Our star, Kent Smith. We'll return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once for service in the United States Army or the United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army of the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army 
of the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, once again, at our microphone, our star, Kent Smith, and our producer. Welcome to our theater of stars, Kent Smith. It's good to have you with us. Thanks, C.P. If it's all right with you, I'd like to have our customers hear a few highlights in your life. Well, sure. Well, how far back do you want to go? No, not too far. Now, don't worry. But I do want to bring out your combined experience and success in both the theater and pictures. Which uh, interested you first? Well, since I was born and educated in the East, I leaned towards the theater. And uh, you went to Harvard, didn't you? Yes, but they had a funny attitude there. They seemed to get the idea I should come to class instead of wandering off in theatrical jobs. So I got tossed out. Of college? Of college. <laughs> We'd organized the university players in West Falmouth, Massachusetts at that time, and I just spent too much time in dramatics. Henry Fonda was in the group, Margaret Sullivan, Jimmy Stewart, and a lot of others, too. We doubled between the theater and a nightclub. And I doubled as head waiter and a daijo dancer and busboy. <laughs> well, I know that you have a long list of fine plays behind you. And what is equally important, you've worked with many famous names of the stage. Let's see, there were Helen Hayes, Walter Houston, Faye Bainter. And uh, Catherine Cornell, Brian Ahern, Jane Cowell, Peggy Wood. Well, then I started working for RKO and stayed there until I joined the Army. That reminds me, here we're doing a recruiting show for the U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force. One of the last things I did while I was in the Army was a picture called How to Be a Civilian. Oh, I remember it. And now we've got to interest the young men and women in an Army or Air Force career. Well, I know of none better, but with all the advantages they have to offer. Yes, the new educational program, the opportunities for promotion, the young men and women can have a fine career in the service today. But let's get back to your picture work. How about a few titles for our listeners? Well, let's see. There were uh, Hitler's Children, Miss Lander's Mine, Nora Prentice, Spiral Staircase, Magic Town, Voice of the Turtle. Yes, and many others. But now, your current picture at Warner Brothers with Gary Cooper and Patricia Neal, the dramatization of the famous Ayn Rand bestseller, The Fountainhead. Ah, uh, well, we'll all see it, Kent. I hope so. And now, suppose you tell us what you have in store for your listeners next week. We've been talking long enough about me. Next week, Kent, and ladies and gentlemen, lovely, talented Anne Baxter joins us in a bright comedy romance, The Intuition of Diane. In upstate New York, where Diane teaches school in a small town, there's always a shadow of spinsterhood haunting her just around the corner. Diane's intuition comes to her rescue with a trip to Hawaii. Romance under blue Hawaiian skies almost loses a game try competing against a precocious child she tutors for the trip. It sounds mighty good. I'll be listening. Well, so long, C.P. Goodbye, Kent. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when lovely Ann Baxter stars with us in The Intuition of Diane. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. Kent Smith appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. Script was by Rich Hall, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. The program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.